Good morning. Good morning, family. Welcome to your word and worship experience this morning. Yes. Last Sunday of January. January 31st, 2021. Yes. I got it right this week. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We're thankful to be right here having our, our word and worship experience this morning. And we're just thanking God for all that he has done, all that he is doing, and all that he is going to do God. in this year. So Victory Word, we just being thankful today. We praise God and we bless his name. Pastor T has announcements and we're going to get right into our service this morning. Amen. 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 Good morning, good morning, Victory Word. Good morning, Word Church, Facebook family and friends. We welcome you to your word and worship experience. On behalf of Pastor Mike and myself, Lady T, come on in and take a seat because there's a great blessing waiting for you. Amen. Hallelujah. We are so grateful and thankful to be before you this morning. Yes, we, are. we just we just can't thank God enough for all of his blessings that he has bestowed upon us. We're thankful for partnerships around the world. We're thankful for yes. our church family, Victory Word. We're just thankful for everyone Amen. who takes the time to think about us, pray for us, and 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 sit in and and fellowship and worship with us. During Amen. these virtual sessions, we are so grateful. Can't be grateful enough. Amen. And as uh, Pastor always says, there sight, there's vision, is always better than sight. It's good to have sight, but vision that means you're more aligned with God. Amen. You know. So first, we would like to recite our vision, the Victory Road Church vision. Should come across your screen. And come on and recite it with us, all right? Amen. Here we go. The, the Victory Word Church, Church is, is a place where you will experience freedom in worship, connection with others through life-giving relationships, compassion for the lost, and the teaching of God's Word in love. A place where lives are being changed, hurts are being healed, and hope is being restored. We are empowered lives to live purposely for him. Amen. 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 So thankful for vision. So thankful. Remember that you can do all things through Christ. Amen. Amen. And, and that the all is what God has put in place for you to do. Amen. Let's remember that. Hallelujah. On this last Sunday of January 2021, my God, the month has flown by. Yes, it has. We want to welcome you and invite you to our fresh, our first fruit season. Yes, amen. amen. It's first fruit season. <laughs> Hallelujah. From now until Easter Sunday, we're asking our members and, and those who want to partner in with us, fellowship in with us on this, uh, this great occasion to sow into um, our first fruits. Sow our first fruits. Get your pledges in, Victory Word. Get mm -hmm. your pledges in and proceed to honor your pledge. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Last year, our first fruits, we were, because of our first fruits, we were able to put a new roof on the building. Yes, God. Yes. Amen. Yes. So yes. It, it, we, we're thankful. Everything that you do at the Victory Word Church, we are thankful for it. Yes, Brand yes. new roof. We're good. Yes. We're good. We're yes. thankful. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Uh, I'd like to remind you to tune in on Wednesday, February the 3rd at 7 p.m. for a Bible study with Pastor Mike. Yes. Come on, come on, tune in and get your one hour of power. Yes. I promise you, you'll be glad you did. Amen. 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 Oh, let's see. Birthdays this week. Hmm. Also on Wednesday, February the 3rd, our own co-lead elder Geraldine Cochran will be celebrating her birth anniversary. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Make sure you shoot her a text call. Facebook shout out, whatever, yes. whatever. Shoot her a happy, happy, blessed birthday. Happy wish. birthday, Elder. Happy hey, birthday. In advance, in advance. <laughs> amen. Amen. 
Uh, remember, 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 as I've been saying for the past almost year now, <laughs> although we are living in some challenging times, and you know, some of us have really been challenged, but you know what? Your faith and trust in God is what's pulling you through. Amen. And long as you remain faithful to what Thus saith the Lord, he will continue to see you through. Yes, he will. And so as kingdom students, as kingdom stewards, we must remember, we must remember, we must continue to fulfill our obligation to the Lord and this ministry. Amen. So as you prepare, as we prepare for our giving, yes. our tithes, our offering, our heave, our first fruits, amen, we ask that you give from your heart. Amen. Amen. Because you can't be God's giving, but it doesn't hurt to try. All right. <laughs> Amen. So you can go to our website at www.victoryworldchurch.org and you can hit the giving tab and um, use your debit card to continue to help in the upbuilding of the kingdom of God. You can also make your donations via Giveify. Amen. If you haven't downloaded the app, please do so. And look for Victory Word Church, Detroit, Michigan. And you can give your donation via that avenue. And if you're not comfortable with any of those avenues, you can always use the good old postal system. Amen. Amen. You can send your donations to P.O. Box 361-200, Gross Point, Michigan, 48236. That's Victory Word Church at P.O. Box. Three six one two zero zero Rose Point, Michigan, four eight two three six. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We appreciate each and every one of you for being diligent in your giving. Yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and God bless you. If you need to reach Pastor Michael or myself, Lady T, just give us a call on the church office phone at 313-243-4512. If you have need for a special prayer, and I know a lot of us do these days, you can send your prayer request to victory, www.victorywordchurch. Uh, I'm sorry, victorywordprayerrequest at gmail.com. Send your prayer request, www.victorywordprayerrequest at gmail.com. Or go to our website, www.victorywordchurch.org and hit the prayer request tab. It will go directly to our pastor, and we will pray with and for you. Also, I always ask to keep our pastors and our leaders in your prayers, amen, because they are definitely frontliners, too. And, and send out a special prayer for our AP, Mark Oliver, amen? Amen. Hey, hallelujah. Our prayers are purposeless for today. Our Victory Word Church family, Pastor DL and First Lady Harville and New Life Ministries Worldwide family, and Spiritual Church and his Army family, Pastor Romarco, and First Lady Pittman and the New Prosperity Baptist Church, Bishop Leonard Gardner and family, Pastor Gregory and Lady Smith and the Zion Hill Baptist Church, Pastor James and First Lady Reigns, and the Ecclesia Christian Ministries, uh, Pastor Doran and Lady Morrison and the Higher Praise Worship Center, Pastor James and First Lady Minnick and the Mount Pleasant Missionary Baptist Church, Brother M.J. Oliver, our mother Claudia Oliver, and our grandfather Bishop Tillman Oliver, and our Oliver family, Minister LaRue Clay and family, Sister Tina White and family, Sister Vonnie Brown, Pastor James Marks and family, and our Victory Word Church located in the country of India, Pastor Daniel Mose and family, and our Victory Word Church located in the country of Kenya, Vincent and Jean Freeman, Kelly Bennett, all of the school systems and students on all levels, um, our first responders and healthcare and essential workers, and a special prayer for the sick and shut in and the bereaved. If you have anyone to add to our prayers of purpose list, just give us a call on the church office phone at 313-243-4512. Don't forget to go to our Facebook page, every Monday for the awesome, the anointed, the most prevalent word of the week. All right. And remember, we are living Amen. our future, future now. now. Amen? Amen. Amen. And with that, I hope you are ready. I hope that your mind is open 
and your soul is ready to receive what God has for you today through our shepherd, our pastor, Dr. M.K. Oliver. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, good morning, Victory Word and Word family. I've been waiting all week long to worship God with an anointed vessel just like you. Take your neighbor by the hand if you would. Take your neighbor by the hand and just say, neighbor, it's another good day to have a God day. I love you to life and Christ Jesus loves you all the more. Amen, and we praise God. Amen, Victory Word. Word family, we're glad to be here the fifth Sunday of January. We're thanking God for all that he has done. Victory Word, uh, Pastor T, she was, as she was reading the uh, prayers of purpose, I, I want to pray for those that may be sick and shut in and going through some things. It's on my heart to pray at this moment right now for them. So let us pray. Most gracious Father, we come before you first and foremost this morning, always giving you thanks and praise to your holy name. Lord God, I ask that you touch those that may be hurting right now, that may be going through trials, tribulations, that may be going through different uh, medical challenges, Lord God, may be going through financial challenges, Lord God, may be going through relationship challenges, Lord God. We ask you right now to go before us, make crooked places straight, God. I ask you to wipe tears from our eyes. I ask you to put a smile on our face. Lord, I ask that you just continue to allow us to, to, to go through whatever we're going through, Father, and make it out on the other side. Lord God, we know that some have lost loved ones, have gone through different challenges this year and going into this year and coming out of last year. But Father, we're fighting for a captain that's never lost a battle. And so right now, we just thank you we praise you, we glorify you, we magnify you, and we ask for your Holy Spirit to fall fresh in this house once again. Lord, wherever we may be, you are there. And so right now, God, we just thank you. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. As your servant David said at one time, if I had 10,000 tongues, I could not praise you enough. So, Lord God, we just give you all praise today. We know that without you, nothing would be possible. But with you, all things are possible. So touch your people in a very special way this morning, Lord. Let them know that you are their God and you are our Father. That is my prayer this morning. And it is so in Jesus' name. Amen, and we praise God. Amen. 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 Victory Word, uh, who's sitting in this setting this morning, thought we'd have breakfast with victory. So you can still eat your breakfast and have your coffee and do whatever that you're doing. I'll be drinking mine along with you. Just having an intimate moment with God in an intimate setting. And I, I really want to uh, challenge us more in 2021 to be more thankful. To be thankful for what God has already done and to be thankful for what he is doing right now. To be thankful that no matter what season you are in, be thankful that God allowed you to be in that season. Because there are so many people who wish they could be where you are, who wish they had a roof over their head or, or food in their refrigerator, whatever the situation is. I don't know what yours is, but just be thankful. I know sometimes it's hard to be thankful when so many challenges hit you all at the same time. So this morning, I want everybody to just take a deep breath and think about where God has brought you from. Because he didn't have to do it, but he did. 
And we just want to say thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. We're going to go to the book of Romans, the eighth chapter. Familiar text. Starting at the first verse, going to the 18th verse. I'm reading from the NASB translation. And it says, Therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. That's enough to shout about right there. For what the law could not do, weak as it was through the flesh, God did. Sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and as an offering for sin. He condemned sin in the flesh so that the requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who are according to the, for those who are according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who are according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. For the mindset on the flesh is death, but the mindset on the spirit is life and peace. Because the mindset on the flesh is hostile toward God, for it does not subject itself to the law of God, for it is not even able to do so. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. However, you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. But if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. If Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, yet the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. So then, brethren, we are under obligation not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you are living according to the flesh, you must die. But if by the spirit you are putting to death the deeds of the body, you will live. And for all who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For, ye, for you have not received a spirit of slavery leading to fear again, but you have received a spirit of adoption as sons by which we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, heirs also, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. For I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed to us. I want to preach this morning from the sermon topic, Spiritual Deliverance from Personal Bondage. Spiritual Deliverance from Personal Bondage. Uh, the Apostle Paul poses a question in chapter 7. He, he asks this question, must a believer spend his or her whole life frustrated by ongoing defeats to indwelling sin? Is there no power provided to achieve victory? The answer to the first question is no, and to the second question, yes. In this chapter, chapter 8, Paul describes the ministry of the indwelling Holy Spirit of God, who is the source of divine power for sanctification and the secret for spiritual victory in our daily living. 
But first, Paul reminds us, since deliverance is through Christ Jesus, no condemnation or punishment awaits those who are in Christ Jesus as a result of faith and identification with him. So, this morning, I want to ask you the question, do you have your ID card? Do you identify with the Christ that lives within you? Verse 1 says this, Therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. The whole chapter 8 is about life in the spirit. Flesh walk brings about condemnation. Fleshly walk, your flesh walk brings about condemnation. So the question is, what are you walking after? Who are you walking after? Where are you walking? When are you walking? And why are you walking? Because if you are walking with Christ, after Christ, then there's no condemnation because you identify with Christ. Your identification when you get pulled over by the police, they ask you for your identification because it identifies who you are and where you live. I want to ask you the question spiritually, when you pull out your spiritual identification, does it show who you are and where you live? Because we say we live with God or we live in peace and we live in joy, but it would be very hard to say we do live there when our actions show something different. Verse 2 says, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. Christ freed me from, watch this, Christ freed me from myself. So now what you think of me doesn't even bother me. Christ freed you. He paid the price for us to have a better look or for us to be a reflection of him in the earth. So as I progress spiritually, I stop worrying about what you think of me naturally. See, too many times we are still worried or we're still bound by other people's thoughts of us, how they see us. The question is, Whenever you get a little faulty on who you see in the mirror, pull up your identification card and see who you are identifying with. Because today I'm preaching on spiritual deliverance from personal bondage. None of us are physically bound to anything. Now we are mentally bound. Mentally bound to what? What people say, past mistakes, all of these things. But the verse one of chapter eight says, therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So the more that, the more that I am in Christ, the less I am worried about what you say or how you feel about me. I'm more concerned about what God says about me, how he feels about me how he sees me. You know, it's amazing, sisters and brothers, there's some people that are only going to see you from who you used to be instead of who you have evolved into. And now that you've evolved into a new creature, they think you bougie, they think you this, you that, you the other, you don't hang out with them, no. oh, you too good for me, or you too good for this, or this, or that, or the other. It's not that you have too, you, it's not that you are too good, you have evolved into what God has called you to be. And most people can't accept that. But that's all right, because as long as my father accepts me, that's the, that's the world to me. Because the same people that accept you today will cast you down tomorrow. That's why the scripture plainly says, do not put your confidence in man. What it means in man's mindset. Man's mindset says, I will use you until I can't use you no more. I will get all that I can get from you until I can't get nothing else from you. 
I will do all of these things. You're my friend as long as you're doing what I need you to do. And then as long as you, as soon as you do something contrary to what I want you to do, then we are not friends anymore. That's the, the mindset of the flesh that this is talking about, living by the flesh. When you live by the flesh, it's not even talking, at, at this point, we should be mature enough to understand that it is talking about some spiritual things that bind us fleshly. Uh, you're living by the flesh when you think you can do it all yourself and you don't need God. That's a flesh mentality. A spirit mentality says, I can do all things through Christ who does what? Strengthens me. Christ gives me the strength to make it through whatever situation, whatever challenge I'm going through. And remember this, brothers and sisters, the more and more you grow in Christ, the less of a challenge it should be for you to be your biggest en enemy. What do you mean? The more you grow in him, you should not be shooting yourself in the foot as much as you used to. There are some things you should not even get yourself caught up in as you mature in Christ. Things that used to entangle, you shouldn't entangle you like it used to. If you know that you have a certain amount of money or, or whatever it is that you may have, then you know you can't spend like you got more than what you have. And as you mature, you learn to live within your what? Your means, whatever that is. Don't put pressure on yourself unnecessarily. Stop making your life harder than what it should be and then blaming everybody else around you for the mistakes or the choices that you make. Stand up, be responsible, say I've made this mistake, but I'm going to I'm going to overcome it and I'm going to make the best of what God has given me the tools to do that which I need to do. I wish I had a witness today that would say, you know what? The only reason my life is as hard as it is is because I continue to make it that way. Those are choices I continue to make. Help me, Holy Ghost. You have to... Victory Word and Word Family. Stop making life hard for yourself. Trying to be somebody that you're not. Stop making your life hard trying to please other people. Stop trying, stop making your life hard looking for love in wrong places. You know it's no good for you, but you continue to do it in hopes it's going to change. No. If it hasn't changed by now, it probably won't. But one thing about prayer, we love to say prayer changes things. I, I, I challenge you, prayer changes you until things change. And the way things change is you change your mindset about how you look at things because you have allowed the spirit of Christ to do what? Dwell in you. Christ freed me from myself, so now what you think about me doesn't even bother me. I'm at an age really right now that uh, I really care less what you think about me, even though, and let's not get this twisted, we do care about what people say about us. But we can't get to the place where they say about us means more to us than what God says about us. Yes, yeah, somebody may hurt your feelings. I get, I get my feelings hurt all the time. But I rise over it to understand that at the end of the day, I'm who God says I am. I'm not worry about what people say I am, what people say I'm not. You know, loved ones say things that could hurt you. But you have to realize at the end of the day, they don't even have the last say of who you are. God has that. So for what the law could not do, weak as it was through the flesh, God did. Sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and as an offering for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. God sent Jesus Christ to rescue me, to rescue you. What? From a sinful mindset. He sent his best for his best. I'll say it again. He sent his best for his best. Well, how can we be the best when we think we're the worst? When we. But in Corinthians, it said 
that for he who knew no sin became sin, that we may become what? The righteousness of God. So no matter what you think your plight is, God sees you as righteous. He sent his son that, he, that we could be reconciled back to God. And so now that the reconciliation has occurred, I have the Christ spirit in me. So what you say about me should not affect me like it used to when I was living in the flesh, when I was living under my own means, when I was living doing things my own way, in my own strength. A lot of y'all are tired because you keep doing everything in your own strength, in your own power, and you have not submitted yourself to the power of God. So therefore, you wake up tired, you go to bed tired, you work tired, you go through life tired, you'll continue to be tired until you take your rest. Well, how do I rest? It says I must rest how? In the Lord. In other words, I didn't say sleep now. I said get rest. You find rest and peace when you connect to the Christ that lives in you. You got to connect to it. I can't make, can't no preacher do it. Can't no mama do it. Daddy do it. Book do it. Meditation do it. You have to do it. You have to connect with him in you. You have to decide how important he is to you. You have to decide how important you are to him. Or you just continue to keep running yourself ragged. Because that's what we do. We run and run and run. And some of us run when we're sleeping. Till the battery just, just dies out. Don't let your battery get died out. Recharge yourself. Lord, charge us with your power of love. Charge me. Build me up. Where I'm weak, but I gotta spend time. How are you gonna? How are you gonna know God when you don't spend no time with Him? That's like a man and a woman in a, a married in a relationship, and they talking about having a good relationship, and they don't spend no time together. Don't do nothing together. Somewhere down the line, you gotta spend time. If that, if if you gotta spend time naturally, so then what makes you think you don't have to do it spiritually so? Amen? Amen. Uh, for, those who are, for those who are according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who are according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. Do you find yourself just always in natural things? Just doing everything? Uh, the, the, the flesh... Flesh, when I, when I speak of flesh, I'm talking about things that you use your own strength to do when you really need God's help to do. That's what I'm talking about. That which you chase after tells me who really governs your mind, your action, and your deeds. That which you chase after. Whatever you're going after, that, that lets me know. That lets me know. Uh, you know? It lets you know what's your priority. And as Christ has freed us, as he has freed our mind, and he has delivered me from me, then I have to realize this. I can't hang out with dead things. I can't have dead things regulate my mind. When you live with dead things for so long, your negative disposition cannot be contained anymore. In other words, the more and more you live with dead things around you, all you see is that. Every time I call, oh, hey, how you doing? Oh, I'm just, hey, this, my back, my neck, my foot, my this, my that. In other words, every time you just have that dead mentality, that's all you can see. When you are with dead things, situations and relationships, pain becomes your companion. When you are with dead things, situations and relationships, relationship pain becomes your companion. It's some of us that's been hurting so long that when we don't hurt, we think something wrong. Whether it's a, a bad relationship, physically, emotionally, spiritually, financially, you name it. 
we've been in that so long because we haven't really had the mind to change when Christ. See, there's a difference between deliverance and healing, and I haven't even gone into that. I haven't even gone into the healing. It, what? That's a whole nother sermon for another time. But you just remember, when you are in a dead state of mind, you start to get your torturer and deliverer mixed up. Yeah, you get your deliverer and your torturer mixed up. They did it in, 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 in biblical times when Moses was, was the, the deliverer, delivering the children of Israel from Pharaoh. And when they left and they saw the Red Sea in front of them and Pharaoh's army behind them, first thing the Israelites said is, well, you know, Moses, you got us out here now. And it would have been better for us to stay in Egypt. At least we had burial ground. You see, the people had got mixed up on who the torturer was and who the deliverer was. Many times when I'm in a dead state of mind, we get our torturer and our deliverer mixed up. You got to get rid of dead things, y'all. You got to get rid of the dead things that may be hindering you. And it all starts in the mind. It is the power of the mind. The mindset. Let this mind, Philippians 2 and 5, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. You got to change the way you think about yourself. You got to change the way. And let me tell you, because you're in a, 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 a challenging situation, that ain't the end. That ain't what God brought you to. That's not what God even has for you. Stop settling for things that, that, that when you change your mind, you change your life. Before God delivers you, you must first confront what's hindering you. You need to call it out. Call it. What is it? What is it? He can't deliver you if you won't even if you won't even acknowledge that there's something to be delivered from. We can't get to healing until deliverance shows up. So you got to be delivered from something in order to get healed. Amen. For if you are living according to the flesh, you must die. But if by the spirit you are putting to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Whatever state of mind you live in, that is what nourishes your spirit. Whatever state of mind you are in nourishes your spirit. What you saying, preacher? I'm saying... Whatever you eat, that's what's going to fortify your body. Spiritually and naturally. So if I eat all junk food, I'm going to be just a hot mess. But the more and more I eat correctly and I, I, I feel better, I believe I look better, have more energy. The more and more I eat God's spiritual food, and I'm not just talking about going to church. I'm not just talking about looking on, on a, a service Look, being in a service, I'm talking about truly, when you truly eat and drink the word of God, things in your life change. You become a new creature. Stop waiting on people around you to change when you won't even do what's necessary in yourself to change. I'm talking to myself first. I cannot expect things around me to be any different until I decide to be different in me. Amen. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. The children of God's Spirit makes you walk with a holy boldness and kingdom confidence. You got to be confident in this word. You got to believe that God is, and he is a rewarder of them that do what? Diligently seek him. Seek him. Knock. 
ask, it shall be given. Those are things we have to do from a spiritual posture. There are some things that you have to do inside of you to change you so you can be who God called you to be. And if children, heirs also, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. If you run with Christ, then your reward is Christ. Whoever you run with, vis-a-vis -vis loyal to, that's who is going to pay you your reward. Did you hear what I said, family? If you run with Christ, then your reward is Christ. Whoever you're loyal to, that, loyal to that, that's the old folks put it this way. Birds of a feather flock together. In other words, brothers and sisters, the mindset, you got to be with the people that have a mindset like you or that's in the, I'm not, they don't have to be like you, but they, they have to have that, that, that mindset of wanting, wanting more, being more be what God called them to be. And it ain't about a house and a car. It's about peace and happiness and having a mindset to be, love thy neighbor as thyself, to be a, a, a servant to others, to love humanity more than things, to be able to be there for, for other generations, to let them know that there's a reality in serving a true and living God. There, there has to be something that I leave as a legacy more than just something that's tangible, that's money and this and that and the other. I like to leave some more wisdom and knowledge and understanding to the generation coming behind me to let them know, yes, you're going to have some good days, but yes, you're going to have some bad days. Yes, the sun is going to shine, but yes, it's going to rain sometime. And the question is, how do I handle my downtime? It's easy to handle my up days. How do I handle my down days? And if I can show someone else how to handle my down days, I will know that my living was not in vain. You got to be able to put out something to some, for someone else to understand that even though I'm going through, say it with me, Victory Word, I'm not through going. I got to realize that God has something greater for me, but sometimes I have to go through. I have to cross through. I have to go through in order to get to the other side. Victory Word and Word Family, don't compare your current situation to your kingdom currency. I'll say that again. Write this down. Put it on your refrigerator. Put it in your car. Put it in your purse, in your wallet. Don't compare your current situation to your kingdom currency, which means your spiritual worth. Don't continue to hang out with dollar-minded people when you have a million-dollar idea or a million-dollar spirit. Why? Because there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Don't condemn yourself because you think big and everybody around you think small. Don't condemn yourself because you may not be where you want to be right now. That's why I'm letting you know, don't compare your current situation to your kingdom currency. And every time you forget about your currency, reach in your spiritual pocket and pull out your ID card. Because your identification cards identifies you to who you are and the kingdom that you are a part of. So I want to drop some spiritual nuggets from what I received out of, out of Romans 8 uh, in the text. I see a Savior who celebrates my overcoming, not my undermining. That, that, that's, that's what I'm pulling out of, the, out of the text, is that I see a Savior who celebrates my overcoming, not my undermining. And I also see walking after the flesh not only demeans my character, but it also destroys my consciousness. Walking after the flesh not only demeans my character, but it also destroys my consciousness of who God is 
and who I am. When, when I start walking after the flesh, when I'm walking in after my own self, when I'm in my own self, when I'm in my feelings, when I'm in my emotions, when I'm in, in when when I can't get over me, when I can't get over myself, I already told you earlier that God He He, he sent His Son to free me from myself. Because when I get in the way in, in my flesh, then not my flesh not only demeans my character, but it also destroys my consciousness. Knowing who Christ is in me builds my mind, my body, and my spirit. See, when I know who Christ is in me, it builds me. It builds me. It doesn't diminish me. Because as I said earlier, I see a Savior who celebrates my overcoming, not my undermining. I realize the earnest expe expectation of me, the creature, or creation of God waits for the manifestation and the fullness of God to be magnified and glorified. I'll say that again for you. I, Pastor Mike, realize the earnest expectation of me, the creature, or creation of God, waits for the manifestation and the fullness of God to be magnified and glorified. In other words, I'm waiting on my change to come. I'm waiting because I understand my kingdom currency. I'm waiting on that. The, the expectation. The expectation. I'm waiting for the manifestation and the fullness of God to be, to be uh, elevated in me. Why? Because I'm free. And when I, when, when I walk in the freedom of God, then there's a responsibility connected for me to show that to others how there is a reality in serving a true and living God. And God will do some supernatural things in me that will allow me to be more like him and a reflection of him in the earth. And as one of my uh, former mentors said, he would say this all the time, Bishop Jordan C. Wiley, you ain't seen nothing yet. You can take that from the good. You can take that in the bad. However, it depends on you. The scripture says, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has for them that love him and are called to his purpose. In other words, you have a purpose that God has called you for. And don't let nobody else turn you around from that, that, that spiritual unction that is in your spirit, in your heart, in your mind. That he's allowed to be in you because as I said in my, uh, in my uh, introduction, that Paul, he poses the question, must a believer spend his or, whole, his or her whole life frustrated by ongoing defeats to indwelling sin? And that question is no. Why? Because there is no condemnation to those that who are in Christ Jesus. There is no power provided to achieve victory. The answer to that first question is no. And to the second question, yes, there is an answer. He has freed me from me. He has freed me from, from what other people think about me. He has freed me from those things, what, holding me. We are spiritually crazy. If we allow God to take the shackles off of us and then go in another part of our life and allow the shackle, not allow, go and put the shackles back on. We sing the song, break every chain. We break the chain and then go put the shackle right back on. Why? Why? Because of our humanity. You, you have to, you, there's a song saying, encourage yourself. You have to encourage yourself. David said that. He had to encourage himself. 
Because every day ain't Sunday. That's why your relationship is important with God. Who do you say I am? That's what Jesus asked the disciples. Who do you say I am? It doesn't matter what everybody else say. Who do you say? Who do, who do you say you are? Who are you connected to? What do you believe? What is your report? H how are you perceiving yourself? Victory Word and Word Family, I'm asking this question today. Do you want to just be delivered or do you want to be healed? Deliverance is a part of the process, but healing, that, that's, that, is, that is the destination. Healing. And how do I heal? By first acknowledging that I'm hurting. I can't be healed from something that I will not confront. And the average person today won't confront the demons that's, that, that is trying to, to hold them down, to keep them in despair. What do we do? We just keep working over it. We just keep running by it. We just keep on keeping on. We keep on moving. That's what my mama did. That's what her mama did. That's what my daddy did. I'm just doing the same thing. No. The word says, the day you hear my voice, the day you hear it, harden not your heart. In other words, stop running past it. There's some issues, challenges, situations, circumstances we must deal with. Even though we're still in a crisis setting, there's things that we still have to deal with. Even though we're still in a pandemic, God is still in charge. Even though we're going through, we're not through going. I believe the best is yet to come. Now that's my belief. Where does it start in me? If you want better days, start declaring them right now. There's a brighter day ahead. There's things that are coming down the road we have no control over. But that's one thing, there's one thing I do have control over, and that's my praise and my worship. I control that. I can worship it. They say in season, out of season. It ain't no in or out season. I just worship. I just praise. I have to. That's the only way I can stay sane, to know that there's something greater than me that lives in me, that's keeping me. And I just want to praise him and say thank you. Victory Word. Uh, tune in next Sunday. First Sunday in February. I have a big announcement to make on the first Sunday. And just know that we're living our future now. And that there's victory in the word. If there's one that would like to give their life to Christ, this is your opportunity. Just pray this prayer with me. Lord, I'm a sinner. And I want to be back into the family. I, I, I give myself to you, Lord. I accept, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Lord, I, I ask that you just allow me to be a part of the family once again. And if you prayed that simple prayer, that's all it takes for us to get back into the family of God. It, take, it takes work to stay, but that's all it takes to get back in. It's just to pray that prayer and accept the Lord Jesus as our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Amen. If there's one that would like to be a part of the Victory Word Church, a place where we are, where there, there's no judgment, there's a, where we are a judgment-free zone, we don't beat you up, we pick you up, and we watch God lift you up. Amen. And so for that, we just say thank you. If you'd like to be a part of our church, just call the office, 313-243-4512. Someone will answer the phone or get back with you and accept you into the, the fellowship. Amen. Amen. So, Victory Word, just a, a reminder that, that God loves you, and so do I. Amen. Pastor T, 
has given me the quote of the week. You know, we cannot end this service without the quote of the week. Amen. 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 God can't move in your life until you make room for him. Amen. Did you hear what she just said? <laughs> She's, I'll say it again. God can't move in your life until you make room for him. Amen. So there's some things you need to get out. There's some things you need to, to just uh, get rid of. So God can be in his proper place in your heart and in your mind. Well, Victory Word, it's been a great day. I'll see you Wednesday right here at the Victory Word Church. One more time, we'll have a blast. And we thank God for all that he is doing, all that he has done and all that he will do. Amen. I love you to life, and Christ Jesus loves you all the more. And it is so, yes. and it is so, in Jesus' name. Amen. We praise God. We say thank you. We love you. And I will see you here next, no, this coming Wednesday night. Amen. God bless you.